Welcome back to the shop. I'm Kirk Anderson. Now in this week's video, I'm going to be flattening and putting a grid on the spoil board to my new CNC machine. Now when creating a file to run your CNC machine, there are many options out there. And it also depends on the machine that you have to which option will be good for you. Now I got the Onefinity Woodworker machine and I decided to go with Karkov Maker as the main platform that I'm gonna do all of my designs and everything in. Now one thing about Carco Maker, it is a subscription that you pay $15 a month. But for me, I think it's worth it. Now there are cheaper alternatives out there and when I say cheaper, I mean free. So you need to make that decision yourself as far as what program you wanna use. Now, once you open up Carveco Maker, it looks something like this. And now what I wanna do is I wanna open up a new model. So just go over and click new model and this window will pop up. Now it'll ask for the dimensions that you want. And then also you can set the resolution. Now I always put the resolution at the max, which is 2000 by 2000 points. And then you can also select what units of measurement you're gonna use, whether it's millimeters or inches. And then next you can check where you want the job origin point to be. Now I just leave mine on the lower left corner. And then just hit okay to create a new model. Now when a new model comes up, it'll always come up in the 3D view. Now, especially for this, I don't want the 3D view. I'll just go back to the 2D view. And I also want the project window up. Now, the first thing I want to do is basically flatten the spoil board. This one is really going to be really simple. The first thing I want to do is create vectors going all the way around the spoil board. Now, the Onefinity has a cutting area of 32 and a quarter inches by 32 and a quarter inches. So that's the dimensions I'm going with. So over at the window, you just enter the dimensions where you want a point to be located at. And then just hit add point and it goes to the next point. And then once you go back to zero, zero, it'll close it up and all the vectors are connected. And then once the vectors are connected, now we can create our tool paths. Now for this, I'm creating an area clearance tool path. Now the starting depth will be zero. The finished depth, I'm only gonna put at 0.1 inches. Now you need to add the tool. Now in the tool list here, I have a spoil board flattener that I've already inputted into here. So I'm just gonna use that. It's a one inch flattening bit. So I'm gonna go step over 0.4 inches, which is 40%. Step down is a quarter of an inch, which is more than the finish depth, so it'll only take one pass. I got the feed rate set at 200, plunge rate at 100, and spindle feed set at 1500. Now the spindle speed is kind of immaterial with the Onefinity, because you set that on the router. And this is going to be a raster cut, in other words it's just going to go from side to side. In an offset cut, it would start from like the center and come out, or you could have it go from the outside and go in. Now the machine safe Z, that's where the Z axis will be whenever it's moving. So I set that at one inch, which will be above the three quarter of an inch that the material is. And of course the material thickness, as I just said, will set that up, it will be three quarters of an inch or 0.75 inches. Now you can name the tool path to whatever you want, or you can just hit calculate and it will create a name for you. And when you're only having one tool path, there's no reason to even name it, so just hit create. And there's the tool path. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna save this file so I could use it in the future if I need to.
Next, I'll go over to the project window. I'll hit the tool path, and then I will save the tool path. And then this window comes up, and there's only one tool path, so that's real easy. Uh, where I'm going to save it, the file name, and then machine uh, file format. Now, if you click on this, it lists almost any CNC machine you can think of. Even some of the knockoff no brand names are listed here. But if it's not listed here, you can still use generic G code. But Onefinity is listed, so I selected the Onefinity in inches. And then I hit save, and it saves the G code. And it's the G code that you take over to the CNC machine to make the cut. And it's real easy. You just either save or just copy the G code onto a thumb drive and then bring it over to the Onefinity. Now I did mark up the spoil board so you know exactly where it's being cut. Now if I do this again, I probably won't cut as deep as I am because there's no need to. And also when I created the spoil board, I did make it oversized on purpose, but I didn't intend to make it as oversized as it is. But most of the projects that I have in mind for the CNC in the foreseeable future are not going to be as big or bigger than the spoil board. So the inch or so of the spoil board that's not being flattened is not gonna be an issue for me. Now in the future, if I'm gonna make something that is gonna be a little bit bigger than the spoil board, then it'll just be a simple matter of redoing the spoil board. Now, as I said, it created a little bit of a lip because the spoil board is larger than the cutting area of the machine. But I tell you what, where it flattened it, it did a great job. And now it's back to the computer to do the tool paths for carving out the grid. This is going to be a little bit more in depth than just making four lines and boxing in what the spoil board is. I'm going to be making the grid two inch squares. Now there again, I started at the bottom with zero, zero, then I went over. Now instead of going over to 32 and three quarters, I just went over to 32. Then just a matter of inputting the numbers and adding a point each time. Then once you get up to the top, now you have to do the vertical lines coming down. It's still very simple, but it is a little time consuming. Then of course, once you get to the end and you hit in that zero, zero, and you hit add that point and it connects all of the vectors together and it creates a, a continuous path for the tool path. Now just a matter of creating the tool path and then bring it back over to the CNC and plugging it in. Now for cutting the grid, I'm using a 60 degree V groove bit. And there again, I didn't need to cut it as deep as I did, and next time, I probably won't. But this is an entire learning experience for me, and I hope you're learning along with me. Well, that's it. The spoil board is complete. Now, as I said, there are some errors that I did in creating this, but the errors are not detrimental in where I can't use it. But I've never had a CNC machine before. This is my first one. So everything I do is on a learning curve. And so far, I'm not displeased with the way that my learning curve is progressing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, all you woodworkers out there, just get out there and cut some wood.